Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Monday, 13 May. After a few days of fun in London with the boys, uh, here we are at the European Open here on Monday. Obviously, the trade escalation over the weekend has caused equities to gap open lower. Um, here at Privateer, watching this two very stubborn countries two very stubborn leaders uh, filled with ego selfishness don't think this is going to get solved anytime soon certainly it's not going to get solved this week so we continue to see risk off based on this based on valuation um, both uh, lead us to believe that selling S&Ps anywhere or over the 2900 handle uh, is a good idea and staying core short uh, remains the way forward. Of course you have to keep in mind as always when we're in a big change in trend event both sides tend to get stopped longs and shorts so the 60 handle move on Friday was tough on the shorts uh, unless you're trading it tactically and all these gap opens second Sunday night in a row where we have a gap open lower are tough on the longs um, so tactically short is the way not conviction short tactically short pretty big week uh, for euro this week we got lots of data we got GDP data we got inflation data we got ZEW volatility has just been crushed here we are 112.30 uh, we've moved like 10 points so far today um, but we do think that we need to get ready for one side or the other here we're not sure um, which side is going to come into play here obviously if the data just surprises higher the market is long dollars so that might help but if the data surprise is lower because we're risk off and the fear is embedded into the market right now we could easily go lower so we're data dependent this week in euro and in euro yen and we're going to keep a close eye on that what else Aussie we have wage and da wage data and employment data to look forward to uh, Inflation should be weak or neutral. Employment data also neutral. Um, Aussie looks like it's set to go lower, based basically on just risk off and trade stuff. We did, we printed this interesting double bottom here that I kind of like, sixty nine, sixty three. If there was more volatility in the market, this would definitely just be a pure break trade. Um, but we're treating Aussie as if it's just a full proxy for for the trade war so core short is the way so it's a tradable short you might add through 60 but then you might buy 52s and then resell 60s and buy 52s again that kind of trade um, is what we're recommending going forward your kill switch on this uh, is above Friday's high 70-20 so you have to keep in mind if you're leaving a 50 point stop you want to try and get a hundred points at the minimum uh, on your take profit so core short is the way get your average better it's a tough way to trade but when it's low vol and low energy um, this is one of the sort of better ways to ensure that you keep your seat because if you just smash Aussie here at 69.75 and have to leave a 50 pointer, making 50 points uh, in currencies these days is much harder than it normally is sort of over my career. Because vol is just so low, it takes two or three days. And the longer you have the position on, the more risk you have. I won't get into the, all of these metrics, but um, core short. It's not the, not the ideal professional way to trade, but in some market conditions, this is just what you have to do. 
One last thing, Canada blew blew those employment numbers out of the water. Holy cow. Um, we saw that from the lunch table on Friday. Not involved in the trading side, but um, this, this looks like a sell, even though it's risk off. Uh, and we do like fading this, any dollar CAD moves to the top side, mainly because the market is very negative CAD and long dollars and those numbers were just outlandishly good so we don't really think CAD's going to get above 50 here so this is a quiet sell if you want to be more conservative you can sell Aussie CAD uh, which can be a fun cross it's been a while since I traded it we see this is already sort of knocking on the lows here's the four hourly be some risk in Aussie CAD below 93.70 we're, we're there right now uh, but we do like dollar CAD lower um, so it's it's a funny theme. We like Aussie lower and we like dollar CAD lower. So CAD higher, Aussie lower. We like core short stocks. Um, and one last thing. Uh, as the drama in the UK continues, I, again, I don't pretend to understand this. After spending spending the weekend there, two things hit me. London is just fine. It's thumping. Uh, it's busy. Um, nobody's like afraid of Brexit. They're just tired of it. So in that sense, it was sort of sterling positive. But getting rid of May and replacing her with sort of the Farage barrage, or whatever you want to call his Brexit party, um, this on the face of it is incredibly negative. So we have to watch this a little more closely and sort of drill down a little bit to see where we are on this uh, this British vortex of of crap. Um, but this can't be super bullish uh, for sterling. So if you're still short sterling in from last week, God bless you. Uh, that looks like it's con going to continue to set to go lower. And, you know, here's the 200-day again in sterling. We breached it 10 days ago, so it's not going to be like any pent-up energy, but I just wouldn't fade the downside in cable. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to take much risk in cable today, but for those of you who are taking risk, it looks like to us that the downside now has has a little bit of risk. Um, so be careful with that. Look, I've said enough. Uh, back in the saddle here. Aussie lower, stocks lower, uh, and we're going to trade this dollar CAD uh, also downside. Good luck to you all out there. Hope you make tons of dough today. I will uh, catch you tomorrow.